a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who is called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menean, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So they, sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O God, let all the nations praise you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light, so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him. For I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him, the word that I spoke. It will condemn him on the last day, because I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, we continue to celebrate this Easter season, and we continue to see in the readings that the resurrection of Christ leads to the proclamation of the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection of Christ tells us that everything Jesus spoke is true, and he affirms that, of course, in today's reading. Everything he says is a reflection of God the Father. He and the Father, as the readings over the last couple of days explicitly said, are one, one in being. So his words are the words of truth. His words are the words of the Father. His words are not just the words of some Galilean preacher. They are the words of God. Now, if that's true of Jesus... It tells us about our obligation as preachers, and not just as ordained preachers, but the obligation we all have to spread the faith. It tells us something about what we have to spread, whether you are parents instructing your children in the faith, or, or religious instruction teachers in your parish, or you, if you run with some kind of Bible study or adult education group. These words of Jesus talk to us about a clear obligation we have. The word is objective. Outside of our own mind and experience, it's not something we create. It's not something we can edit. It's not something we can give to people 
halfway, let's give them the parts that are popular, the parts that they like, and withhold the rest. Paul says at the end of his preaching ministry, we'll hear it towards the end of the Easter season, towards the end of the Acts of the Apostles, I did not hold back anything of the teaching of God. And that's our duty because people have a right to the entire teaching, whether they are the popular parts or the unpopular, the difficult or the easy. People have a right. It's not some kind of extra gift that we give them. It's a right that they have. And we see, therefore, this energy reflected in the first reading, this organized energy in the Acts of the Apostles at the guidance of God and the Holy Spirit of sending forth the teachers of the word. Set Barnabas and Saul aside for the work to which I have called them. Not to go teach their own ideas, but to teach the Word. Again, objective, outside of us, eternal, consistent with what God the Father says. In fact, it is what God the Father says through the Son. And then he commissions his preachers and teachers and prophets. Specific people saying a specific word. This organized proclaiming of that word of course, continues to this day as we have teachers and preachers appointed in the church and all of us responsible for witnessing to the Word of God. So if you hear a pastor, a bishop, or even the Pope saying something that's inconsistent with the Word, you remain faithful to the Word. And you don't have to be troubled or confused about what the faith teaches you can be rightly upset that somebody ordained to teach the faith misrepresented it, but you don't have to have any doubt about what the faith teaches. Again, it is the Word that tells us that. What has the church always taught? That's our guidance. The beautiful thing about the Word, and Jesus said, is, is, it, said it is the Word that will judge you. If you depart from it, if you fail to believe it, it's not some kind of arbitrary judgment on my part. God's judgment of us is not whether, uh, whether he likes you or not on that particular day. It's not arbitrary or capricious. It's, it's set objectively in the word. And that, brothers and sisters, means that it is fair and also that it is transparent. We don't have to wonder, what is he going to judge us on? We're not going to be surprised. The word has been spoken. Jesus said, you, 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 you have it. You want to know how I'm going to judge you? Listen to the word. And it's going to be the same for everybody. This is consoling. And it also gives us courage. Because we don't, just like God doesn't care about human respect, and he's not doesn't show partiality. So it also means we don't have to worry about that either. We don't have to worry about the arbitrary, ever-changing, subjective ways that people judge us. They'll go ahead and judge us and treat us in the subjective and often unfair way that they choose to do. We're accountable to the Word. The word in which we believe, the word that has been preached, that's what will judge us, and that's the only judgment we care about. So let's be faithful to that word. It is received from Jesus through the church, ultimately received from the Father. It's a word of life, of salvation, of righteousness. It's a word that distinguishes good actions from bad. It's a word that saves us. Let us be faithful to it. Let us proclaim it. Let us rejoice that it is that word, not some kind of subjective opinion that will judge us. And let's thank God for revealing that word and revealing all of it to all of us. Amen.